Good morning. Welcome to the Lakeside United Methodist Church and greetings to our friends in the North Shore community and the Peninsula areas and also to our broadcast worship friends. A uh, special welcome to any guests and visitors we have today. I think we have quite a few. A uh, word of note, children are a blessing in our sanctuary. We also offer nursery service, though, for children ages up to eight or up to five in the lower northwest wing, which is over here. Um, we also have from ages six to 12, after the young disciples' time, the children will leave the sanctuary and go into the parlor to watch a special DVD. Enclosed in your bulletins, there's a yellow connect card. Please fill that out. We only need one per family, but it's our way of communicating with you. Also, today we have a special coffee hour. and We hope that you will stop in to wish Ann and Dave Glassmeyer a happy 65th wedding anniversary. There's flowers on the altar, and they are celebrating the 65th anniversary of Ann and Dave, and they were given by Pastor Vern. There is also a rose to celebrate the February 3rd birthday of Reuben Eli to Mary and Johann von der Mermy, who is the grandson of Kathy Joy and great-grandson of Virginia Joy. <clears throat> Lord, open our lips, and we shall declare your praise. Grace and peace to you, let us pray. Gracious God, we give thanks for this day, for the people gathered here in love for you and one another. We ask your blessing that we devote this hour and all the moments of our lives to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord, the people say, Amen. Amen. Let us rise and greet one another as friends in Christ. As we begin our 40-day Lenten journey, our first hymn, 269, Lord, who throughout these 40 days, let us sing.
And please be seated. Please join me in the act of praise that's found in your bulletin. Where Christ walks, we will follow. Where Christ stumbles, we will stop. Where Christ cries, we will listen. Where Christ suffers, we will hurt. When Christ dies, we will bow our heads in sorrow. When Christ rises, we will share his endless joy. Christ is the way, Christ is the light, Christ is life. Singing, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross, the hymn 298. Hear these words as we begin our 40-day walk in Lenten journey with Christ. Joyce Rupp writes, The cosmos dreams in me while I wait in stillness, ready to lean a little further into the heart of the holy. I, a little blip of life, a wisp, of unassuming love, a quickly passing breeze, come once more to Lent. No need to sign me with black ash of palms. I know my human place. This Lent, I will sail on the graced wings of desire, yearning to go deeper to the place where I am one in the one. Oh, may I go there soon in the same breath that takes me to the stars when the cosmos dreams 
in me. Young people of the congregation will come up and join. We'll be right here in the chancel. We have a few words for you from the gospel. Em, would you come? Any of the children of the church? Come on up. That's good, that's good. Uh, I'm Vern. Say hi. What's your name? William. Hi, William. Yeah. William, this is em. Emma. Okay, all right. The choir just sang a wonderful song. Comes from very old words that, that say, wherever we go, wherever we walk, we're walking with the love of God forever and ever. 
We're going to be walking in the next 40 days through a time of year the church calls Lent. And we're going to have stories about what's under your feet. I'd like to show you some things that have been under my feet. These were under my feet when I walked on the beaches down in Florida. Oh, and these. These were under my feet when the doctors were trying to fix my bones and my nerves. They thought I might not walk again, but I wore these under my feet, and they helped me to walk. Ah, these were under my feet. I wore these when I walked on the streets of Albuquerque, New Mexico. Want to try them on him? No? Okay. And these, these are shoes that I wear when I walk on the paths of the parks under my feet. And these shoes, these shoes I bought when I moved here to Lakeside. These I wear under my feet when I walk out on the beach or on the rocks. These are my walking shoes for, for Lakeside. We have shoes under our feet. You have boots. The song tells us that wherever we walk, for as long as we walk, even when we're sitting still, even when we're not moving, we're always with the love of God. I'm going to ask you to do something. I'm going to ask you, if you will, over the next couple of weeks, if you'll write a story, if you'll write a story about your favorite walk, maybe it was a walk in the woods, maybe it was a walk to grandma's house, maybe... Maybe it was a walk through the night when you were out looking at the moon. I want you to tell me a story. Write it down if you can of your favorite walk. And guess what? I'm going to ask everybody else to do that too. I'm going to ask everyone to write down your story of your favorite walk in 40 words or less. <laughs> 40 days of Lent, 40 steps, 40 words. And we'd like to see those stories of your favorite walk. Maybe, maybe it was the walk down the aisle and a walk of 65 years following. <laughs> a wonderful walk. So will you do that? Will you help me? And I, I'll look forward to seeing your stories as we walk together with Jesus. God loves you. Have a great day. You can go watch the DVD now. Friends, in our prayers, we know that you will continue to keep these persons in our prayer intentions in your thoughts in the days to come. We ask that you have a prayer of blessing and celebration for all those who gather together this weekend to celebrate with David and Anne. If you're somehow connected in family to David and Anne, would you just kind of lift a hand so that we might see you for a moment? Well, David, you're connected to Anne. You can lift your hand. Okay. <laughs> right. Thank you, and God bless you for being here. May your celebration be warm and wonderful. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask you in the week coming to offer your prayers and cards, especially as uh, Raleigh and Stella will celebrate their 65th anniversary in the week coming. So uh, send them a prayer card as well. Lord, Hear our prayer. And we ask you to share persons, events in your lives that you would lift in prayer today. Carol? I might just add that Mr. Elliot organized prayer list with our grandson who came from China, and he had a deformed leg, which this past week he had partially amputated, and it's pretty 
recovering from that and will be giving a prosthetic leg and hopefully have a perfectly normal life after this as we're all coming in. So thank you for remembering him. Uh, for Elliot and recuperation and future care, Lord, hear our prayer. A prayer of thanksgiving for the beginnings of the returns of folks from sunny places. Kathy and Keith, good to see you. Lord, hear our prayer. Les, did you have one? No, I, I just want to enjoy it. Okay. Enjoy the hell. The good friends that are running on the riches of the other riches of both of you. And thank you for having your grandchildren to sing in my choir. And your children. Uh, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us offer our quiet and personal prayers in the presence of God. Gracious God, hear the prayers of your people. Grant them peace in this life and in life to come. Hear our prayers for the church, this gathering and all the houses of faith, that your promise may awaken us to walk boldly, gladly, and humbly through all our days. Hear our prayers for the people who know any trouble, who lack the safety and security that is required for basic human good, that we might be charitable and be supportive in care and compassion. Gracious God, as you walk with us, inspire us with your Holy Spirit that we see in one another the image and likeness of Christ and that we grow in the likeness and stature of your goodness. Hear our prayers that we seek forgiveness and recovery from any addiction, any greed, any indifference, any hate, any evil, or injustice in our lives. And may your Holy Spirit continue with us then in all our moments, we devote our walk with you. In the name of the Christ, who is with us through the valley of the shadow of death, in the quiet waters, at the table, in all places and in all times, even into the house of the Lord forever. In whose grace we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Peace of Christ be with you.
most holy. Oh Lord, most holy. Oh loving Father, thee would we be praising always. Help us to Open wide the window of our spirits, O Lord, and fill us full of light. Open wide the door of our hearts, that we may receive and entertain thee with all our powers of adoration and love. Our reading this morning comes from the 10th chapter of Romans, verses 9 through 15. When you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart, and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth, and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinguish, distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not yet believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. Here ends the reading. Our gospel song you will find in the black, The Faith We Sing. You'll stand and we'll sing together, Walk With Me, the refrain, page 2242.
And this is the gospel according to Luke in the fourth chapter. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, To you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God, and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem, and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to protect you. And on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is said, do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. The word of the Lord. God. Almighty God, send your Holy Spirit that we are hearers and doers of your word. The people say, Amen. Amen. I look forward to your walking stories. In Ohio's Cuyahoga National Park are several walking paths. Paths wind among woodlands and glens, waterways and waterfalls. Paths wind around rock formations left from glaciers withdrawals. Walking different paths requires hikers to adjust their types of gear, shoes, to adjust their energies and their wills, to accommodate the different demands of different paths. One path takes you through the rookery where the blue herons nest in the trees. Another path takes you through a covered bridge, across overlooked cliffs, and through glens filled with daffodils, blooming in the thousands. One daffodil path has a vine hanging from the trees. The gnarl of this vine is circular and it is strong and it will hold you when you sit in it and swing. In late winter, early spring, the earth is brown and gray except the green and yellow jonquils, which hints the spring of life from winter's death. And as you sit in that vine and you swing in that contrast of colors and seasons along the path, that hidden path deep in the woodlands, there you sense an opportunity for a new turn, an opportunity for a new path while you're swinging. You sense that you have an overwhelming sense of reconciliation and peace in the world. In the past, 
I've kept a discipline of trying to walk that path at least 40 times each year. 40 days leading to Easter, many Christians call Lent. And the 40 days are reminiscent of Noah's ark on the flood for 40 days and 40 nights. Reminiscent of Moses leading the exodus of people out of slavery and wandering in the desert for 40 years. And reminiscent of Jesus on his spirit walk heard in the gospel today in the wilderness for 40 days, in the time between his baptism and the beginning of his ministry as he wrestles and struggles with the questions of life. Between Ash Wednesday and Easter, we walk a spirit walk. A walk, a journey of self-examination, a prayer and fasting, works of charity, extravagant generosity, on the paths of repentance or a new turn, on the paths of reconciliation in community. In many cultures is an ancient custom, giving a tenth of each year's income for some holy use. For Christians, to observe a holy Lent is to do the same, with roughly a tenth of the year, 40 days, 40 days dedicated, committed in Christ. After being baptized by John in the River Jordan, Jesus went off alone into the wilderness where he spent 40 days, asking himself the question, what it means to be Jesus, what it means to be called and to serve. During Lent, Christians are supposed to ask about our meaning, our purpose, our callings, our causes, especially as followers of Jesus. We are called to adjust our gear, to adjust our wills and our energies, that we have grace for the paths ahead. So, what's under your feet? In other words, in what ways are you walking? How are you making your steps? You know that commercial on television that asks, what's in your wallet? The advertiser promises you 50% more cash but the advertiser does not give you the details of how to get that cash. I ask, what's under your feet? Scripture tells us that as we live and move and have our being, we walk with the Holy One. And we are asked to love mercy, to do justice, and to walk humbly with the Holy One. For Christians, the details are in the people that we meet along the way, in the ways that we walk with them, for so many walk against them, in the ways that we walk with them, for so many of them can't bear to take the next step. In the ways that we walk with them, for so many have walked alone for too long. In the ways that we walk with them, because too many people have been left to their own devices. The details for Christians are in the people that we meet the people that Christ would love. In this tenth of the year, in this 40-day season, leading to Easter, take up a new path, a journey, a journey into charity and contemplation. 
I'll give you a couple of questions as you enter this season, as you prepare to write your walking stories. Ask yourselves, if you had only one last message to leave to a handful of people who are most important to you, what would that message be in 40 words or less? And also in this season, of all the things that we've done in our lives, which are the ones we would most like to undo? And which is the one that makes us most happy to remember? May you have grace and peace as you walk with Christ and walk with one another. Let us pray. Lord, let us walk close with you. And may the paths ahead lead to love among us and life eternal with you. Through Christ we pray. The people say, Amen. Amen. And friends, our hymn, 127, Guide me, O thou great Jehovah. Now many of you know that the word Jehovah is kind of a confusing word. We understand it to represent the Lord, but we know that it's kind of a mistake. The word Jehovah, it just sort of happened that in, as the languages were translated, that that word was made up, Jehovah. It's a nice word. We know that it represents God, and we'll sing it with grace as we stand. Let us stand for this one in singing 127. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah. And as we give ourselves to the Lord, we also offer gifts, labors of love, and tokens of work in service of Christ Church. Please be seated.
Almighty God, with all that we have and all that we are, we honor you. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the people say, Amen. Amen. Our affirmation of faith. Glory to you, God, God our, our strength, strength and our, our Redeemer. Redeemer. The vacant cross and the empty tomb vindicate your claim. Love, love suffers and love saves. saves. So fill your people with joy and the church with justice and love. That, that the, the world, world sees that Jesus Christ is not dead, not a hero to commemorate, not a teacher to recall. For Christ is the living Lord for our worship and walk. We never walk alone. We walk the ways of Christ. Singing 724 on Jordan's Stormy Banks. And may God raise you up on eagles' wings, bear you on the breath of dawn, make you to shine like the sun, and hold you in the palm of God's hand forever, the people say, Amen. Amen. And I remind us that we are all asked to gather in the parlor for coffee and refreshment and to acknowledge the Glassmeyers family celebration with appreciation. Our sung benediction. <laughs> 